Praise the Lord, this be Pastor Preacher Warren. God give me a message that I preached up in Harlem. And never forget this. I was asked to be a guest preacher up in Harlem, and my message was God wants order in the court. I want to say it again. God wants order in his court. The Bible declares, let everything be done in decency and in order. Now, before I go into that message, I want to first talk about the character of Jesus. Many people want to be like Jesus because they want the power of Jesus. They want to walk on water like Jesus. We know that his power is incredible. We know that the power of Jesus is amazing. Many folk want to be like Jesus because he calmed the raging sea. Uh, he cast out devils. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. So we look at how incredible his power is. Not only is his power incredible, but it's also holy. Because when people a lot of times do miracles, a lot of times it's not the power of God. They get their power from the witchcraft worker by selling their soul to Satan. It's, magic is not holy, but the power of God is holy. For he said, be holy for I am holy. But I want to talk about his character, not just only his power. Notice when Jesus told his disciples, let the greatest among you be the servant. Jesus being the greatest among them all. He washed the disciples' feet. Think about that. Jesus who did miracles, cast out devils, raised the dead, healed the sick. Death even obeys Jesus Christ. This great Jesus of Nazareth washed the disciples' feet. They should have been washing his feet. But he was an example of what he told us. He said, let the greatest among you be the servant. So Jesus was the greatest among them. He became a servant. He said, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. He washed the disciples' feet. Now look how humble Jesus is. He really doesn't have to be humble. He was God in the flesh. He came as a son of redemption. And now he's the Holy Ghost of the church. Jesus really didn't have to be humble. He really didn't even have to die on the cross. He chose to because he loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Look at the character of Jesus. Let's study his character. A lot of people want his power, but do not want his character. They don't want his personality. They don't want to be humble like Jesus. A lot of people are high-minded. There's a lot of high-minded pastors, a lot of high-minded preachers. They, they even get high-minded just having a title. They get arrogant over that. So imagine if they have the power that Jesus had. Imagine how arrogant you will become. Many of you want to be God. You want his glory. When God said my glory, I will not give to another. I am the Lord and the Lord is my name. What are you trying to say, Preacher Warren? In order to have order in God's court, we must have first develop the character of Christ by being humble and begin to acknowledge who's the boss of all Pentecost, who is the source of all Pentecost, Jesus Christ. Ah, oh, Yahshua HaMashiach that God is still the boss and I'm not the boss. If God gonna give me power, I have the knowledge that God is still the boss above me. Uh, he gets the glory. I got to stay humble. That's why Jesus said, and the meek shall inherit the earth. Now let's talk about order in the court. Let's start with family. I want to tell you mothers out there to just give you a wise advice that your daughter is not your sister. Oh, come on somebody. Your daughter is not your mother. And your son, come on, is not your father. What are you saying, Preacher Warren? Many of you parents need to inst instill order in the home. It starts with the father. But many times the father is not even there. My, many times it's the mother that's raising the children all by herself. We need the father there. It took two to make the baby. Man and woman, not men and men, not female and female, come on. You know I'm telling the truth. It took for a female and a male to get together to produce those children. That's the way God ordained it when you're married. You was, you was fruitful and you multiply. They had children. Now it must be order. There are a lot of families that doesn't have any order. It's domestic violence. Many of you allowing your daughters to tell you what to do. They bossing you around. A lot of you are afraid of your own children. You acting like your daughter is your mother. You got to establish the fact you the mama. You didn't come out of her stomach. Tell your daughter you came out of my stomach 
you got to instill the rules in your house and train up a child in the way they should go so when they grow up, they will not depart from it. That's why it's good to have church in your house. It's good to have prayer in your house. Don't wait to go to church on a Saturday, on the Sabbath, or on the Sunday. Start having church in your home. Start having church in your house. So when you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable one to God, you become the church. Your body become the temple of the Holy Spirit. All of my high emotion. Now when God becomes a head, he establishes order. Come on, tell us when God wants order in the court. You don't allow your daughter to tell you what to do. You are the mama. Now you're allowing your children to run you over. Your children are rebellious. You know why? Because many of you was the beggars when you was a child against your mother. So you must ask God and say, Lord, forgive me for being rebellious against my mother. Lord, forgive me for being rebellious against my father when I was a child. Because that's why now when you grew up, now you got children. Now your children are rebellious against you. Because that's how you was when you was a child against your parent. What goes around comes around. Now you don't reap what you sow. But until you repent and say, Lord, forgive me. I give my heart to you and I give my children to you. Now God can have order in his court. Oh, come on, somebody. He wants order in the church. Oh, he talked he talk to the seven churches. He talked to the pastors of the church in the book of Revelations. Because God wants order in his church. God wants a holy church. Oh yes, God is love, but he's also a holy God. He doesn't love sin. He doesn't love all the evil that's going on in the world. Why you think God sent the wildfires and the tornadoes and the hurricanes? That's not mother nature. That's God's nature. Why are you giving credit to mother nature? This is God's nature. When God sent that flood back in the days of Noah, that was not mother nature. That was God's nature. So why are you giving credit to mother nature? This is God's nature. God is speaking to the world. But are we listening? Are we hearing? Are we getting the message? Are we reading the signs of the time? That everything that Jesus said is going to happen is happening right now. He said it shall be wars and rumors of wars. Matthew chapter 24. He said earthquakes in diverse places. We are in the end times. Jesus is on his way. Woo! I want to be ready when he comes back to ratchet me up out this wicked world. Whoa, hallelujah. That's why I want my heart to be right with God. God wants order in the court. You got to establish order in your house so you got to teach your children how to have order. If you're spoiling your child, they're going to grow up spoiled. They're going to grow up not appreciating. If you're always giving your child everything they always want, then you're spoiling your child. You're supposed to instill correction in your child at an early age. That's what the Bible said. Train up a child. In the way they should go. So when they grow up, they will not depart from it. Train them up. But you got to have order. The parents got to have order. If you always have your child watching Grand Theft Auto, watching all these violent video games, they hear all that hip-hop music. I play bass guitar. My record is coming out, so I know about the hip-hop world. They wanted me to sign a contract in the hip-hop world. I said, no, I'm not going to make a pact with the devil. I'm going to keep playing for Jesus. A lot of this hip-hop, uh, got a lot of vi violent lyrics. So when our young people hear that violence in the lyrics, they're being hypnotized to kill. When the Bible said, thou shalt not kill. Oh, you got to instill order in the home. See, it starts with the home. Starts with the home. Starts with the home. God wants order in the home. Oh, come on, come on. If you're selling drugs in your home, oh, I know about the drug stuff. I grew up in the Bronx. I grew up in Harlem. I know what I'm talking about. Never sold drugs. Never been on drugs. But I know about the game in the streets. They put the drugs in the baby cabbage. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. They put the drugs in the little boy's backpack and he carried it to the drug dealer. Drugs is not the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father but by me. Drugs will mess you up and send you to hell. But Jesus can clean you up if you want to be clean. But it's up to you. God wants order in the court. You got to instill in them how to appreciate. You got to teach your child, but you got to have order. If you're going around making all these babies, not paying child support, you being a sperm donor, you're not taking care of none of your children. Women, you up there getting pregnant by deadbeat dads. Now you bring your children and all your disaster. And now you taking your anger out of your children. Now you wonder why your child joining gangs. 
If your child hear you curse, they are gonna curse too. If your child see you selling drugs, they are gonna be selling drugs too. You gotta be an example to your children. Hallelujah. Teach your child about God. Teach your child about Jesus. Church starts in the house. Training starts in the house before you take him to the schools. Oh, hallelujah. There's so much gun violence going on in the schools, but it's time to stop the crime and say, Jesus, I want you to be mine. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, tell yourself, it's time to stop the crime. I want Jesus to be mine. Because when Jesus come in your heart, there's no hatred. There's no jealousy. God puts love in your heart. He said, love one another. He didn't say hate each other. God don't hate black skin. God hates a black heart. God don't hate white. God hates spite. I want my heart to be right with God. Ah, hallelujah. How can, he, can we all going to stand before God one day? God wants order in his court. Don't let your daughter be telling you what to do and running you over. Don't let your son be telling you what to do and run you over. Now, don't abuse your child either. A lot of children have been abused. The Bible declares in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, Fathers, which includes mothers, provoke not your children to wrath. You got a lot of parents. I mean, you got a lot of cruel parents. They can wonder why the children are so angry because you're abusing your child. You're not encouraging your child. You're putting your child down. You're supposed to instill life in your child. The Bible said life and death is in the power of the tongue. Tell your child you can do it. If you're always putting your child down, they're going to grow up with a low self-esteem with themselves. A lot of them drop out of school. You got a lot of them child molesters. Raping their daughter, raping their son. Child molesters are going to hell. They sit right in the Catholic church, even in the Pentecostal churches. Not everybody's a child molester. I'm talking about them child molesters. We're talking about you a priest. Wearing them white robes that got a cross around your neck, but you a hypocrite. Jesus called them vipers. Come on, come on. God wants order in the court. There's no order in the streets. Too much gun violence going on in the streets. Somebody must take a stand. Ain't nothing wrong with having love. What's wrong with that? You are not my nigga. You are my brother. We've been called the nigga word too long. Why do I want to call my black brother a nigga? I want to say you a winner, not a nigga. Come on. You are a winner and not a nigga. Being a winner is not killing each other. If you kill each other, you're not a winner. If you're jealous of one another, you're not a winner. But when you love one another, when you begin to encourage one another, that makes you a winner. And Christ Jesus, by living a holy life and keeping his commandments. Because Jesus said, ha, if you love me, keep my commandments. No, we're not perfect. We all make mistakes. We all fell short at one time. But you can get back up and say, Lord, clean me up. If you got a problem with drugs, say, Lord, I'm tired. I beat on drugs. I want to be delivered. He'll deliver you. Woo! You don't got to take no drug overdose. All you need is a Holy Ghost. Woo! Whoa! Getting the Holy Ghost is better than taking a drug overdose. God will supply your every need. We well, thank God for the young man that came to the YouTube. Young men, drug dealers are coming to Jesus. Gangsters are coming to Jesus. Thugs are coming to Jesus. God can save a drug addict and get him out the attic and make him a preacher. God can save a drug dealer when they call on the faith healer, Jesus Christ, and make him a man of God. Woo! God can save a pip and make him a preacher. Ah, now the hoes will get the Holy Ghost. Shh. Now the prostitutes will get the Holy Ghost. Can now they see the pip then got the Holy Ghost. Ah, I felt that right there. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It's time to have church in the street. Jesus was always in the street. And this preacher, you don't got to hate. I ain't got no collection plates. I don't preach for money. The love that God wants to give to you is for free. He already paid the price on the tree. You don't have to take no LSD. God wants order in the court. God wants your body to become the temple of the Holy Spirit. That wonderful body that God has given you is not for drugs or crack or alcohol or cocaine. When you get in God's domain, he'll set you free from crack and cocaine. Now you no longer have to be insane. Woo! I feel God, I feel the Holy Ghost. You don't need no dope. God is a great hope. God wants order in the court. He wants order in the church. Too many women dressing half naked in the church. Bring it on temptation. How are you going to pass out a track to a man and you ain't got no bra on? 
You're already beautiful. It's about the inner beauty. You're, God bless you, daughter. God bless you and your family. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And God bless his business. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're already beautiful. God wants his daughters to dress holy and live holy. His sons to dress holy and not bring on temptation and take advantage of the women or the women taking advantage of the men. God wants order in the court. I don't take advantage of God's people. God holds me responsible. I don't take advantage of another man's wife. I'm already married. Been married only for two years. We got too many pastors taking advantage of women in the church. Women taking advantage of other women's husbands. God wants order in the court. Now God can bless. Now God can bless. See, when you, see God said, when you keep my holy word, I'll bless you. So when you keep my commandments, he said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. He said, I'll make you above only and not beneath. Now God can bless you when you put God first. Oh, no, we're not perfect. But say, Lord, help me in the areas where I'm weak at. Let the weak say I'm strong. God wants order in the court. Tell your daughter, let's pray together. Your daughter is not your sister. Your daughter is not your mother. Your son is not your father. You got to establish the fact that you the parent. We got to meet parents that's scared of their own children. They run the house. Bringing boyfriends in the house, smoking weed and bringing drugs in your house. It's time to bring the Bible and the Holy Word of God. Praise God and say, devil, you ain't taking over this house. This is God's house. Don't let the devil drive you out. You drive the devil out in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell the devil you a liar. I'm going to stay on fire. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. When well, you got them witches and warlocks doing witchcraft against you in your neighborhood. Tell that demon, no weapon that formed against me shall prosper. Glory to Dios. Gracias, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. God wants order in the... Woo! I feel Jesus right now. God wants to set order. Even in the marriages. God wants to set order. Your marriage is supposed to represent your marriage to God. But if you're married to a she-wolf and she's a Jezebel, if you're married to a he-wolf, you're married to the wrong one. That's a match that's made in hell and not a match that's made in heaven. The devil come pretty. The devil come handsome. The Bible said Satan transformed himself as an angel of light. Gotta be careful who you marry. Or oh, they start off nice at first. But after three months of marriage, the real side begin to show up. That's why I'm going I'm, to I'm love Jesus more than I love my family. If your family don't want to get saved, you follow Jesus. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Says so God bless you, man of God. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. God Jesus. Take a stand for God no matter what. If folk can find time to sell drugs on the street corner, if folk can find time to sleep with another man's wife or another woman's husband, that we can find time to love each other. We can find time to pray for each other. We can find time to support each other. We can find time to bless the Lord ha, at all times. Ha, and his praise shall continually be in our mouth. We can find time for God. If folk can find time to gossip. If folk can find time to hack somebody's Facebook. If folk can find time to watch these horror movies. If we can find time for Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. God bless the police force as they fight crime here in New Jersey. All around the world. Hallelujah. Bless every person that's riding in these cars. In the name of Jesus. Jesus is the answer. God bless you for the world today. He's coming again. Tomorrow is not guaranteed to none of us. Let's stop the police brutality. The cops need to be saved. I need to be saved. The firemen need salvation. Let's not abuse them and don't abuse us. But let's get along. Too much hatred in the world. God wants order in the court. And when there's no order in his court, God sends his wrath. You saw I worked there, you was cold, I hot. He said, but if you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. If you're serving Baphomet and claim to be a Christian, ain't no order in the court. You can't serve two masters. Jesus said, love the one and hate the other. If you love Jesus, you don't shake hands with evil. Because God is against evil. God is a good God. God is a wonderful God. The Bible declares, and Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, he shall be called the wonderful counselor. Hallelujah. He shall be called the prince of peace. He shall be called the mighty God. I'm talking about Yahshua HaMashiach. 
I am a believer, Jesus Christ. Oh, Lordy, 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 Lordy. We thank God some drug addicts got saved. Right here in New Jersey, God set order in the court. What you mean the court? God wants our house to be the temple of the Holy Ghost. Establish order in your house. Take care of your children if you know you made that baby. Ah, praise God. A marriage you pray together will stay together. Now the devil cannot send divorce in your marriage. Every marriage got problems. But if it get to a point where it gets violent, it's time for y'all to separate. Come on. God wants order in the court. But love Jesus even more. Heaven is holy. It ain't like the Emerald City. The Emerald City and the Wizard of Oz is magical. Magic is of the devil. The Bible speaks against magic. It's all witchcraft, that Harry Potter stuff. All that stuff is witchcraft. God is against witchcraft. Read the book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 18. Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 31. God told Israel through his servant Moses, Regard not them who have familiar spirits, neither seek after the wizards. For I am and the Lord your God, because wizards are male witches. They got the Ouija boards and the OG boards. Now you wonder why so many demons are haunting your house. Throw away the Ouija boards. Let it be order in God's court. Throw away the psychic tarot cards. That stuff is a gateway to evil spirits. Now you wonder why bad things happen. But when you pick up God's holy word, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the presence of the Lord. I don't wait to go to church to praise the Lord. When God is on your heart, you the church. Woo! God wants order in the court. Now God can bless your family. Now God can save your children because you're saved. Now God can break generational curse and bring generational blessings when we repent and be baptized. Every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. I feel the Holy Ghost don't need no drug overdose. In the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, for the remissions of sins, and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now God can bring order in the court. Now God can break generational curse. I hear the Lord say somebody been molested when you was a girl. God can heal the broken heart. Somebody been raped when you was a boy. God can heal the broken heart. Somebody don't have a father. No wonder you've been depressed. We need more fathers in the home. Young man needs a father and a mother. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's not your fault that your father disowned you. No wonder you've been depressed. But your heavenly father will give you rest. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Be careful who you sleep with. They might have a disease. They might have herpes or AIDS. Be careful who you lay down with. I know you're searching for love, but all in the wrong places. But God got a great plan for your life. You may not see it, but God got a great plan for your life. That's what the devil been trying to discourage you through your family. Sometimes you got enemies in your own family. I'm a living witness. Sometimes your own family will do you worse than folk that's not in your family. But can't nobody love you like Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah! Can't nobody give you joy like Jesus. Oh, God will teach you how to love yourself. Shh. But don't worship yourself. All that worship go to God. God wants order in the court. Now God will work miracles. And the best miracle is to see a drug addict come to Jesus. The best miracle is to see a prostitute come to Jesus. The best miracle is to see a soul come to Jesus and be saved from a burning hell because hell is real. Why do you think God cast Lucifer out of heaven? Lucifer was trying to take over heaven. He thought he can be in command. Lucifer was second in command. He was the most beautiful angel in glory. And so the Bible said his heart became lifted up with pride. According to Isaiah chapter 14, he said, I will be as the most high God. He thought he can take God's place. Nobody can take God's place. God said, I ain't going to have him messing up heaven. I want order in the court. So God cast him out of heaven. Lucifer deceived half of the angels in heaven to follow him, not all the angels. Now they're called demons, our evil spirits, our imps. Now his name is called Satan, our the dragon. 
We used to like to watch them Bruce Lee movies in the dragon, but the dragon really represents the devil. So you gotta be careful with that. I used to like to watch the martial arts, Bruce Lee and in the dragon, but let me give you some knowledge about that. The dragon represent the devil. The devil is also called the dragon. Read the book of Revelations. So you gotta be careful with that. A lot of them don't realize that. So we gotta be careful with things like that because that's the gateway to evil spirits. Bruce Lee was wrestling with a generational curse. He was the best martial artist, but he could not beat this demon that was plaguing his family. The only one who can beat a demon is Jesus Christ. You can't beat a demon with martial arts. You can't beat a demon with a gun. Only way to beat a demon is with the power of the Holy Ghost. Because Jesus said, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. Woo! That's the only way to break that curse. It's through the powers of Jesus Christ. He said, I come to set the captive free. He said, I come to heal your broken heart. Somebody been broken hearted. Drugs cannot set you free. Drugs will mess you up, but Jesus can clean you up. Now you can have a testimony and say, look what the Lord has brought you from. Woo! Hallelujah. He brought me out of darkness and to his marvelous light. God wants order in the court. So set order in the house. Don't give your child anything they always want. Teach them how to earn. Say, uh, son, do your homework. Teach them how to earn. Because if you spoil your child, they're going to grow up disrespecting you. You got to train your child discipline. That's what the word discipline comes from, discipleship. Before Jesus sent his disciples out, he gave them discipline. He said order. God does things in decency and in order. God wants order in the court. Train your child how to be respectful, not how to be a bully in the school. We got too many other kids bullying other kids in the school. Now we got little children killing themselves at an early age because they're being bullied in the school. God wants order in the schools, not gun violence, not bullying. See, your child how to respect other children and not bully them. Love one another. It's Christ had love you. Jesus said by this, all men will know you're my disciples if you have love one for another. Whoa, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, I feel God in the place. I feel the presence of the Lord. God wants order in the court. Teach your child about God so they can, so God can use your child at an early age. A son needs his father, not just only his mother. He needs a father to encourage him, not just mama. We need more fathers in the home. Ah, oh, not out there sperming women, not paying child support. Come on, come on, come on. If you know you made that baby, take care of it. And women, respect your husband. Don't be keep starting fights with your husband after the man done told you a thousand times, I don't want to argue, and you still lie with the mouth. The Bible talks about the brawling woman in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 24. It said it's better for a man to be on the corner of a housetop than to be with a broad in one. Now you run into a TDJ conference. Woman die loose, learn how to keep your tongue. If your husband telling you, I don't want to argue, let's keep the peace, let's pray. Don't keep arguing with the man and now he got to walk out the house and then you wonder why he don't come back home because you know once he put the key in the door, he know he gonna hear a loud mouth. Come on, say forgive me. I'm sorry, honey. How can we make this marriage work? Learn how to forgive each other. Sometimes forgiveness is not always easy, but learn how to forgive each other and say, Lord, fix my relationship. Lord, fix my home. Fix my tongue. Fix my mouth. Fix my attitude. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible said that the tongue is as a fire. Sometimes we can murder people by lying on people. I'm talking about your brother and sister. Are you jealous of one another? That's not the love of God. When you have the love of Jesus in your heart, you don't lie on each other. When you love Jesus, you don't gossip on each other. When you love Jesus, you don't backbite each other. When you love Jesus, you don't work witchcraft against your brother and sister and being jealous of one another. Sometimes you got family jealous of one another. Cain killed Abel because Cain was jealous of his own brother. The Bible said jealousy is just as cruel as a grave. You can't go to heaven having jealousy in your heart. When you got God, he puts love in your heart. Love, that's the problem with the world. It's too much hatred 
in the world. It's time to look. Time to make a change. Sometimes in order to make a change, cut off the wrong crowds. The wrong crowds will lead you the wrong way. Cut off the wrong crowds. Everybody laughing in your face is not your friend. Oh, come on. Jesus said, broad is the way. Hallelujah. That lead us to destruction. And many is going that way. Don't let your friends lead you to hell. If you know they're going the wrong way, don't go that way. Let them laugh at you. Let them mock you. At least you will go the right way. God's way is the best way. Take the straight gate. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Now God can have order in his court. Now you'd be surprised how God will bless. You'd be surprised how God will answer prayer. God will make cancer disappear out of your body. God will make arthritis disappear out of your body. Now you begin to see God begin, act, begin to answer prayer when we begin to repent. Because everybody's prayers, God doesn't always answer because we're still doing wrong. But when we repent from doing wrong and say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. I want to do the right thing. Now God responds to our prayer. That's why he says, my people which I call. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, which I call by my name shall humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. Don't just pray, but obey. A lot of folk pray, but don't obey. I want to pray and obey, not just pray. We got to humble ourselves first. Now we pray because the Bible said God resists the proud and give us grace unto the humble. We must be humble. Don't get high-minded. Have self-confidence, but don't be cocky. Got to stay humble. Man, you preachers became too high-minded. Got to stay humble. When God give you a car, say, Lord, I thank you. Let's stay humble before God. And too many arrogant church people became too arrogant. Got to stay humble and say, Lord, I give you the glory. I give you all the glory. I give you the glory. I don't want no glory. I want God to get the glory out of my life. Humble yourself and pray. Seek my face. Turn from the wicked ways. Whoa. In all 50 states, let's stop the hate. Don't play a hate. Let's come to Jesus before it's too late. He's coming again. Whoa, like a thief in the night. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the presence of the Lord. Woo. I praise you, God. I praise you, God. All give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. When you turn from the wicked ways, then God shall be coming here from heaven. He shall forgive your sin. Now I can heal the land. Now God will bless you and your wife and your children. And those of you who are still single because you got hurt in relationships, the devil come pretty, the devil come handsome, the devil knows what you like, he'll send you a pretty girl, but she's a witch and a gold digger who wants to push the trigger. The devil will send you a handsome man to try to break your heart. But you don't got to take no drug overdose. All you need is a Holy Ghost. Woo! Getting a Holy Ghost is better than taking a drug overdose. Don't let nobody make you lose your joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just come to Jesus. Because Jesus said, I am the way. The truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He's coming again. God wants holiness. He said, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. God wants order in the court. It starts with us. It starts with me. Lord, create me a clean heart. And renew the right spirit within me. That's what I loved about David. David acknowledged his own sin. You can't tell someone else about their sin and you doing the same wrong they do it. We had to be an example of what we preach. The word preach is spelled P-R-E-A-C-H. Take the PR preach, what you got? Reach. Take the R of reach, what you got? Each. That means preach means to preach, to reach each. Or to preach, to reach each. I must live what I preach. Oh, come on, somebody. There are a lot of preachers who don't live what they preach. They're still playboys in the pulpit. Having sex with every girl he prayed for. The pastor going to hell if he don't repent for being a pip in the pulpit. Come on. There ain't no order in that church. Why? Because the pastor ain't living right. Ain't no pips going to hell. Ain't no pips going to heaven in church. We got too many pastors who are pipping. We're not supposed to be a pip pastor. Pipping God's people. I don't preach for money. 
The love that God wants to give to you is for free. God will provide when you seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, that all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Yes, we work. Because the Bible said one won't work, he don't eat. God will bless you when you do your part. Because you see, you're trying. Ah, uh, hallelujah. You draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh unto you. God wants order in the court. Many are asking God for a husband. Ask God to make you a virtuous woman. Are you like the woman in the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, the virtuous woman? Every woman who asks God for a husband doesn't mean that she's wife material. You may be mouth material. You like to fight and argue and cause drama. That's not wife material. There are a lot of men asking for wives, but he's not a husband material. You may be handsome, but if you're abusive, come on. If you're a flirt, if you're cheating, and go on with different girls and you're not a faithful type of man. Then you're not ready to get married. Because marriage is about being faithful. If you're not going to be faithful, don't get married. God wants order in the marriage. There's a lot of marriage people who are cheating on each other. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Come on. I was engaged. I came from Harlem. Born in Harlem. Been preaching the gospel since I was six years old. In the churches and up in the hood. Suppose I got married to a young lady years ago. There was a pastor who slept with my ex fiance Had to call the whole wedding off because she wasn't faithful. The pastor was a pimp. But thank God, I just got married. Only been married for two years. Married another young lady, my wife, Priscilla. She's faithful because she loved me. I love her. That's order. Same thing with Jesus. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. We can say you love God. Then you love each other. When you say you love God, you do your wife right. When you say you love God, God bless him, but save him God. Save him God. You do your husband right. You do your children right. When you say you love God, now you can pray for each other. Now you can bless each other. Now it's order in the court. Because Jesus said you will know them by their fruits. Not by their suits. Because the very one wearing suits might be working roots. Oh, come on. By their fruits, you shall know them. Character. See, going back to character. Like I said in the beginning of my message, character. I want to develop the character of Christ, being humble. I want to stay humble like Jesus. Not just have the power of Jesus. So a lot of folks want to walk on water like Jesus, but they don't want to be humble like Jesus. Hello. They want to have the power like Jesus, but they don't want to be humble. I want to be humble. He said, I didn't come to be served. He said, I come to serve. Got to stay humble. Because the Bible said God resists the proud. And give us grace unto the humble. The reason why God chose Moses. Because the Bible said. In Numbers chapter 12. That Moses was the most meek man. Above all the men on the face of the earth. Meek means to be humble. That's why Jesus said. And the meek shall inherit the earth. The character of Christ. Do you want to be holy like Jesus? Do you want to be humble like Jesus? Jesus Christ is mighty humble. To have all that power. He's humble. Death even bows to Jesus. And look how humble Jesus is. And it, humble came as a servant. God bless you, young man. I'm happy to see y'all. I'm going to come out here and shake your hand. You ain't got to come to me. I'll come to y'all. I'm a servant. I'm here to serve. God bless you, young man. Yes, sir. I see greatness all in you. Yes, Woo! Tell us what you two bless. To be squirt. And you two anointed to be disappointed. Yeah. God bless you, young man. God bless you too. Thank you. God blessing those young men. We thank God that a young woman got out of the wheelchair three months ago. I told that woman here at the bus terminal that before the money is out, she's going to get out of her wheelchair. When she walking now, God had healed her from the wheelchair and gave the testimony here on YouTube. God is still working miracles. I can't work miracles. God is a miracle worker. Every time God is a miracle in this ministry, God gets the glory. God gets the glory. Not me. Preachers got to learn how to stay humble and don't get high-minded and don't get puffed up. Preachers got to learn how to stay humble and don't get arrogant. Stay humble when God give you a house. Stay humble when God give you a car. Because that stuff will pass away. But God's word will live forever. 
But the best miracle is to see a soul get saved and come to Jesus. God bless you. Here on YouTube land, I got your prayer request. I know those have been bound by witchcraft. Jesus can set you free. I want to teach you how to use the authority that God has given you. You got the power. Tell someone in YouTube land, you got the power. If you got the Holy Ghost, you got the power. Get the Holy Ghost so God can give you the power. Hallelujah. Because Jesus said after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. No, we're not perfect. We all make mistakes. I messed up many times. But you can get back up. And God can clean you up. And God can make your life brand new. Young man came to the YouTube, said the Lord delivered him for, nar for narcotics, narcotics and nicotine. The young man testified how he used to be on drugs. And now he's preaching the gospel. God is saving drug addicts. God is saving drug dealers. God is setting order in the court. So when the rapture take place, we be caught up to meet him in the air. And one day God will have a new heaven and a new earth. The holy city, the streets of gold, with no more dying, with no more sickness, with no more gun violence, with no more racism. Hallelujah. It'll be a new heaven and a new earth. According to Revelations chapter 21 and chapter 22. Don't you want to get there? There'll be no need for a sun because Jesus will be shining brighter than the sun. He said, my father's house. He said, let not your heart be troubled. He said, believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. When I come again, I will receive you into myself. That where I am, there he, he may be also. We're going to get to the holy city, New Jerusalem, the streets of gold. We're going to have mansions. I'm looking forward to that great day on you. God. Got a special place prepared for you. So all the suffering that you've been going through here on earth, God has a mansion for you. God has a reward for you. When you suffer with him, you shall reign with him. Because when we're in this world, we go through trials and tribulation. But Jesus said, fear not. Woo. Ha. Fear not. I'm with you always. Even to the end of the world, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. We you got no money to pay the rent. Jesus was stepping on time. Woo! Out of my high most We you got no food in the refrigerator. God is better than a smooth operator. He'll provide. David said, I once was young. Now I'm old. But I never seen the righteous forsaken. Now I was seed begging for bread. God will provide for you. When you put God first, we have order in the courts. God bless you.